back to the garage guys. Today we've got an exciting video for you. We're going to do something that you've never seen before on the internet. We're going to show you how to build a bending die for under $10. And without using a bunch of specialized equipment, well, we did. We used a little bit of specialized equipment, but we'll show you what we used. But most of the stuff is available and can be done by hand. So a bending die for under $10. We're going to show you how it works. Stick around. So we're down in the shop, guys, and we're taking a look at these bending dies that we've made. First one we'll take a look at is an inch and a quarter with a four and a half inch radius, center line radius. We built this die several years ago. It's uh, we'll go through the detail. It's the same same way we've built. We're building the current one today, but we've been running this die for a couple of years. It's got no sign of wear. It's been holding up very nice. It's um, it's been working great for us. So that's our inch and a quarter die. The one we're replacing is this inch die. This was one of the first ones we made. We just hand cut this out. Uh, these were laser cut. We hand cut this one. We printed it and we put it together. Now the reason we we're rebuilding this is because we got an upcoming project where we need to build a, uh, we need to bend 180 degrees with one inch. So that's why we're making the new die today. So this one we've had for a couple of years, it's been working, um, working well. Um, now here is our biggest die, our inch and a half die. Um, we've had good luck with this inch and a half. Uh, we had no trouble bending 95 wall. We had no trouble bending 120 wall. However, we did have a little bit of trouble bending 95 wall DOM. Uh, it was a very hard tubing. It was a little tough to bend, and we actually did get a little crack in the plastic right here. Um, so we just immediately stopped. We didn't want to waste a bunch of DOM, and we went ahead and we did drop the money, and we bought a Pro Tools die, a regular die, so we could get our DOM built or bent. Uh, we kind of put this die away. Didn't think much of it for a while till we finished the project with the DOM. And then I said, well, let's get that die out and see why it didn't work. Well, we went back and looked at the die and we did some more bending with it. And it, again, it went back and it bent, you know, 95 wall, just perfect. And then we stuck the DOM in it again. And what we noticed when it was starting to bend, these things were separating out. So these bolts in here were actually stretching. So we bought these bolts at a surplus place uh, we don't have them countersinked perfect. Um, we're thinking we need to do a little di different on this to make it work and maybe get rid of these bolts. Maybe there's some type of a crappy cheap bolt because we don't get any stretch when we're running the inch and a quarter die. We get nothing, no push out on the inch and a quarter. And that's the only reason this die somewhat failed on the DOM is because it was getting a little bit of a push out. But again, we've bent 120. ERW, 95 ERW, uh, 84 ERW, or 83 ERW, and have no issue with this inch and a half die. Um, for inch and a quarter, one inch, no issues with our dies. So we just thought we'd show you the dies real quick. We've been using them for a few years now. So we're gonna cut out the outside plates for the one inch uh, bending die, one inch by 180. So here we go on the plasma cutter. So you can see the die that we're going to use, cut it out, real nice, looking good, a little bit of dross to knock off on that quarter inch but looks good. We'll get a second one cut out and we'll get the die put together.
So one of the things when working with a plasma cut part is the holes can sometimes be tough to tap unless you drill them out quite a bit bigger. In this case we were using quarter inch steel so the smallest hole you can plasma cut out is quarter inch. So we did run a, a the next size bigger bit through it and now it's time to tap the holes. Uh, it was tough to get the tap started so what we do is we take um, a regular tap and, a, and an impact and we hold it real tight and we just get the tap started a little bit like that and we went and did that on all these so now it's time to get the rest of them tap we'll just clamp it on the edge of the table There you have it guys, we're all set and tapped up, uh, got a little bit of a burr here to knock off. One thing to note, these last four holes were much harder to tap than the rest of them. I'm not sure what's going on, maybe there was a little more heat transfer the way the plasma cut did it, but they were definitely tighter than the other four. So, and in case you're wondering, for a tapping oil, we're using this uh, CRC True Tap. It's one of the ones that Project Farm recommended on his site. So. Um, it works well for us, it's easy to get, and it's fairly inexpensive, so that's what we use. So we're ready for uh, the next step. So we've got both of our parts off the 3D printer. There's a top and a bottom, so they match up like this, and they form a nice um, die here. We've got them off the printer. These are printed out of uh, PETG, P-E-T-G material. Uh, we always buy clear so we can make sure that we're getting a good adhesion. Um, we've taken the burrs off this so we would get our one inch dimension. But generally when you have a good print on PET G, it'll be nice and translucent like this. You got a little bit of a scuff on it, you know, when we took the, took the burrs off on the sander. But we're going to get this assembled. Uh, one thing we're going to do prior to that is we're going to take these we're going to do one more step on the metal that kind of hit us afterwards we're just going to put that on and we're going to draw a line around the die right here and we're going to take and put a little bit of bevel on this metal um, we're just going to bevel it a little bit to that line the other thing that we'll do now is for final assembly, we buy these um, bushings. This is a one inch ID, inch and a quarter OD, and that will go in on here and during the final assembly as our pivot point. So this one's been tapped, uh, ready to go. We've got the other one here, and that one will go on top. Uh, we're gonna get the bevels ground in here, and then we'll do the final assembly. So we've got everything ready for final assembly guys. Um, we've taken these end plates and we've ground just a little bit of a bevel on the inside of them just so the tubing doesn't get marred up and so it goes in and out of the die easier. The other thing that we did with these pieces is we plasma cut out a little uh, square and that'll pop in to hold our um, clamp for the tubing. So we welded on this piece, we drilled a half inch hole, and we welded on some, some nuts uh, to, to tighten up the bolt against there. Uh, one of the things why we changed this design like this, if we look at the original die, we welded the plate just onto the front of the die, and as you weld this on, the plastic wanted to melt. So we thought we were gonna just try and key this and see if we can do it without having to do a weld there. If we have to, we'll spot the weld. Uh, so it's just a little improvement of the design. So anyway, we're ready for final assembly. We'll get started on it.
They're all looking pretty good, snug down. We're going to take a little check with the uh, caliper to see how we turned out here. Um, see if any need to be tightened up. So a few in the middle, just need a little more. Running real consistent on there. That's going to work in my opinion. Tube drops in nice. Uh, got a real consistent dye. We can see the nice translucent color on the Pet G. Got a nice bevel here. We've got a dye that we're ready to try out. Um, we did just use the clamp from the old die that we had on here and the last thing we need to do is we need to tap in this bushing. Now the bushing fits in nice through the uh, two metal pieces but we have to um, get it through the plastic. It's a little tough to get in there. So we're pushed through on the plastic. Um, we've got a piece of one inch stock go through there and we'll just um, check squareness on this make sure that that lined up good we're good there we're good here good there a little bit of slop in there that die will self-center on that bushing but all the squareness looks good we will put a little bit of a we will put a little bit of a tack on a couple of sides here just to make sure hold that holds in but all the pressure will be on here when it's bending so with that we're ready to put a couple just spots on here if we get a little plastic melt underneath there that won't be critical if we get it melt over here then we lose the start of our bend so we'll get a couple spots in there we'll get it in the our bender and give it a try so we've got this piece of one inch that we're going to bend up and we've marked it at 18 inches and we've got some calibration marks. So we're going to use this as our, as our calibration piece to, uh, for calculating our, where our bends go in the future. So I'm going to get it in the bender. Get it set up on our mark. Get the pin in or the clamp in. Check the mark, tighten the bolt, need to grab a wrench. So this is the first thing in the die, we're going to see how it goes. camera readjusted. I apologize for the camera angle. I'm working alone this uh, for the next couple weeks. Jackson's uh, had to go over to Europe for his job for a month, so we'll see him back in a little bit. I'm about two degrees over. We're going to release the pressure. This is the first bend out of the die, guys, so I'm just as anxious to see how it looks as you guys are.
Pull out the follower. There you have it, guys. I don't know what you guys think of that bend, but I know what I think of it. Looks great. Maybe could have just gone a little bit more. It's a little bit under 180, but it's a beautiful bend. Looks great. I'm very happy with it. If I take out the die and we take a look, uh, everything looks nice on the die. Uh, nice and smooth. Um, everything looks great. First bend on the brand new die. Well guys, there you have it. There's our 180 degree bend out of the uh, 3D printed die. There's our die, looks great. Now a little bit about this is Jackson has a, an extensive background in 3D printing and the durability of 3D printing. Jackson used to do durability testing on 3D printed prosthesis. He did that for several years. He designed machines for impact testing and using different materials, durability, um, things like that. And that's why we settled on PET G for this. Uh, PET G and versus the PLA that we're using on the CNC plasma cutter. So PET G, very strong. We also sliced it so that the perimeters of these through holes would be touching up against the perimeter of the arc here. So there's some little bit of technique to how it's sliced and how the infill gets done. But again, uh, for us, a $10 die. I uh, hope you liked the video and please subscribe and like to help the channel out. Thanks a lot and have a great day guys.